Welcome to Booktopia TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with best-selling author Sally Rippon to talk about Hey Jack, Billy B and Billy B Detective. Welcome, Sally. Thank you so much for having me. It's very exciting to be here. Your, your books have, have sold astonishingly well, like just incredibly well. You're one of the biggest selling authors in Australia right now. Um, when you started to write about Billy B, did you have any idea that, what would happen? No idea whatsoever. In fact, um, I had got to a very desperate place, I have to say, because I have been writing and illustrating for a long time, and I think my first books was publi were published when I was about 26. So it was a bit of a slog, as it always is for anybody who starts out in the arts in Australia, and I'd almost got to the point of giving up, I have to say, and I met with the publisher at Hattie Grant, and we brainstormed over coffee, and we decided that we wanted to write a series about a really um, feisty, tomboyish girl, because there were a lot of books out there for, for little girls about fairies and princesses. And so, you know, for a while there, it was a big, big experimentation. It was something quite new, and we knew that we wanted it to be very accessible. We wanted the, the language to be very easy, almost a, a, one step up from an early reader. So it was a challenge for me. It was something quite different to anything I'd ever done. I think initially we talked about maybe having six books in the series, and we thought we'd see how they go, and then um, if they went okay, they'd maybe bring out another couple. So we ended up writing 20. And I think within the first um, 12 or maybe two years, they sold a million copies. So everybody was completely just, blown it's away. No, you can't anticipate anything like this. And, and you can't even analyse why that particular series is the series that takes off. You know, I put as much work in everything I've written or illustrated, and this just seems to be the one that's resonated with lots of people. You readers. confuse all the guys with spreadsheets. They're trying to <laughs> analyse right. and going, what is going on? Right. So if we just pull this apart, you know, can we work out what the. the the there is a little bit of magic in publishing, isn't there, in writing and... Well, even publishers yeah. can't predict it. And I think um, the only thing that I can think is, I think when you talk to a, a children's author and you just ask them off the, off the top of their head, how old are they? Are, they are, and I think for me, I'm still six. I think I'm still <laughs> stuck in the head of a six-year-old. And so when I do go back to mine, those memories, they're still very fresh, they're very authentic. And I think that's what the kids respond to, is that she feels like she could be them. And not only that, she messes up, as we all do, and she makes mistakes, she doesn't always do the right thing, and so she has to work out how to fix these things herself. So I think it's those two things that the kids have really connected with. And then, you know, to be honest, I think it becomes a little bit word of mouth, you know, Billy has become quite popular, and so lots of the, the girls recommend them to other people, and I was at a big girls' school today up in Sydney, and um, they'd all read the books, and they were all passing them on to their friends, so you know, it, it is that thing that once something hits a certain level of success, it does keep the momentum going so I'm just I'm just holding on and just feeling very very grateful and what about um, the way in which <coughs> parents re react to the books because that's pretty important you need them to buy the book yeah um, well I think that's been one of the most moving things for me my younger son has dyslexia so he really struggles with reading he's about a year and a half behind his peers and so when I first started writing the series he was the age group of my intended readership so I would always test them out on him and if he, you know, looked like he was losing interest, I'd pair it back and I'd really work on the text to make it really um, short, tight stories but really accessible language. And so he was kind of my, my um, what do you call it, my experiment, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, now when I meet parents and signing cues, I can see the emotion in their faces because it's really hard to see your kid struggle at school and particularly with reading because you can't get by in any subject without reading. You know, even math you have to read. Yeah. You know, Jenny has three apples and Tony has four. Um, so it's a very emotional connection that they have to the books and they'll come up to me with their little child and they'll say, you know, this is the first book that my daughter has ever read and I can't tell you how grateful I am. And, and I feel like saying to them, you know, I totally understand. I've been there and I'm still struggling with that myself. And so, you know, I feel that if I can be one small part of helping get kids hooked onto reading, that it's a real honour. And I think um, it's really, I get lots of lovely letters from parents and teachers and um, people working with children to say that this series has helped them get hooked onto books. So that's uh, amazing. As booksellers, we, we often get some of that praise because right. we, we make the recommendation and they come back and say, well done. You know, <laughs> well, of course, not after me. <laughs> Um, I, I, I struggled as a kid with dyslexia um, right, okay. yeah, and, I, and I've, I really was in and out of reading because mm. of those difficulties and I, I don't think it was ever really um, um, diagnosed really mm -hmm. properly but I was always below yeah. uh, in, in, the, in the reading levels so I, I love stories where you, where you reach me in a sense, yes, you know, the, the, yeah. young, the younger version of me. Um, how did Hey Jack come about? Well, he was a suggestion by my son, because my son said, why does Billy get to tell the stories all the time? You know, why do we never get to hear from Jack? 
And so I thought that was quite a valid point. I'd always wanted the Billy books to reach both boys and girls, but the packaging makes them look slightly more girlish, mm -hmm. you know, even though, you know, a kid is a kid as far as I'm concerned, and, and all the things that she gets up to are the things that I used to get up to. So we brought out the Jack series uh, because people like my little boy would like reading the Billy stories but wouldn't be seen dead reading them in front of his friends because there's a girl on the front. So it's essentially it's the same story, it's the same friendship but told from his perspective. And so we got a different illustrator on board so they look slightly different to the Billy series. But um, I do try to encourage the boys to read the Billies and the, the girls to read the Jacks because the whole idea of the series for me is it about, it's about kids playing, you know, that now you go through a supermarket and there's the pink aisle for the girls and the black aisle for the boys and girls can only play with Barbies, boys can only play with trains. And, but the whole idea of the Billy series is that, you know, Billy's not great at ballet, Jack's pretty good at it, you know, she's good at soccer but she likes to wear, you know, dress up and climb trees and it is just that thing about childhood not being gender specified and so um, hopefully there will be kids that cross over that don't just stick with the Billy or the Jack. We had um, Tara Moss in here talking about her new book, Fictional Woman. Okay. And uh, she was one of those girls that went to the boys' table to get, you know, uh, to get prizes that were given out, uh, especially for the boys and the girls were over here, and right. she would wander straight over. And look how uh, glamorous she is. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it, this 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 idea is is absolutely brilliant. If, if you can if you can get them uh, comfortable going right across mm -hmm. uh, and reading across. I mean, I, I as a as a reader myself. Um, the number of, of men readers that I meet who just don't read, read women mm. and I just think that's just such a waste it's such a lost opportunity and, yeah. and uh, there's so much magic on the other side of as there is on, on, on the male side as well um, and that to understand too you know yeah. surely you, you would be men out there slightly interested in the way that women think how else do they <laughs> communicate how else exactly. yeah, how else are you going to actually have a full full loving relationship if yeah. you don't know what's going on exactly. and yes. so much of it I think is about the packaging too because if you actually read the book inside you'd see that it would appeal to both genders but I think more and more it feels like the packaging makes a book look more masculine and more feminine and I don't know if you saw that thing on the internet where they changed covers over of no, classic yeah. books and made very girly ones for say of mice and men or, or made a really um, feminine version of a masculine version of a, of a more feminine book and it was quite funny how it changed the whole tone of the look of the book just by changing the cover. Um, and, and you've now taken Billy up a level um, and, and what prompted that? Was that, was that you you, you saw your readership going up a level? Yeah, very much so. So I was meeting a lot of young readers who would come up to me in the signing queue and they'd say, you know, I still love reading the Billy and Jack books, but they're getting a little bit easy for me to read. So they're slightly more complex uh, to read and they're longer stories and the story's a little bit more complex. And so Billy, I'm imagining, is a couple of years older and she and Jack and their two best friends, Mika and Alex, get together and start a secret mystery club. And of course not much goes on in the neighbourhood, so they have to make up things. And um, like myself, you know, Billy has a very active imagination and she tells stories that are so spooky that she starts to scare herself. And so she kind of creates these things that then um, take place throughout the books. So that was very much that idea, is just moving the age level up a little bit. For kids that aren't quite confident enough to jump from Billy to Harry Potter, you know, there is still a little bit of a gap there, I think, where the language is still accessible, mm -hmm. but slightly more complex than the original Billy series. Easier for me to write, though. I get to write longer words, which means <laughs> I always worry. People think I can only speak in two syllables. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're proving us wrong. Thank there, you right? very much. Very uh, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking as a bookseller and, and probably in the same way as your publisher is, if you're doing this, you can go on forever. And I know. <laughs> you have to stop somewhere, though, really, don't you? <laughs> you know, taking, taking, like, right. much like J.K. Rowling with, with Harry going right through school to the... Yeah, and that's a really unusual example, I think, because I think it's become problematic because I see, I do a lot of reading help in my son's classroom and you see a little kid in grade three starting with the original Harry's and, you know, that's fine. The last ones get really scary. And the proof is if you go into the DVD store, you know there's the, the PG first four films and then the rest of them are over almost in the adult department because they're so much scarier. So that's the only series I know of where it actually grows with the age of the protagonist. Otherwise, you tend to stick within the same age level because you're assuming that your reader's going to want to read the rest of the series. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, as, a, as, a, as a bookseller, I'm, I'm really hoping that you, you just you, you go on. You, you get another two years ahead, another two really? years ahead. <laughs> yeah, we have the, the, the full life. It's like the, that TV show that comes around every seven years. Is that? Oh, like the seven up. Seven yeah, that, yeah, seven yeah. Grow yeah, with the yeah it'll, it'll grow. Well, I definitely consider it. The only thing is that I'm wary of not wanting to. Not wanting to look like I've oversaturated this particular idea, you know, I, I am capable of writing other characters, even though I do love Billy and there's a lot of myself in Billy, but I don't want to, I don't want to compete against myself on the shelves as well, but 
Um, I suppose if I was to move up a level, that, that could make sense. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking of it <laughs> <laughs> as we speak. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in. It's been a delight talking to you. Oh, it's been lovely to meet you too. Yeah, it's great. Sally Rippon's books, The Hey Jack, and both Billy B series are available at booktopia.com.au right now.